Hi everyone, this is Frida and welcome to the Dental Radiology. Today we're going to talk about the inflammatory lesions in the jaw, their mechanism and their radiographic appearance. If you like this video, please subscribe down here. If you have any opinions for the next video, please comment and stay in touch. Inflammation is the most common pathologic condition in the jaws. Why so? Unlike other bones in the skeleton, the jaws are unique in the sense that the teeth create a direct path for the microorganism to enter the bone. Regardless of the etiology of the inflammation, such as a tooth decay or an inflammation in the gingiva of a half erupted third molar called the pericoronitis, all these conditions can transport the inflammation inside the jaw and have the same mechanism but they all have different radiographic appearance. Under normal condition, there is a balance between the osteoblastic bone formation and the osteoclastic bone resorption. This balance can be influenced by the passage of the microorganism inserting inflammation, so either the bone formation or the bone resorption will be overcome. We have two radiographic definitions. Whenever we have a bone resorption, it is called rarefaction, and the radiographic appearance would be radiolucent. Whenever we have bone formation, it is called sclerosing, and the radiographic appearance is radioopaque. So, let's talk about the mechanism of inflammatory lesions and what we will see in the radiograph. An initial source of inflammation, such as a tooth decay, can transfer the toxin of the bacteria towards the pulp. The toxin of the bacteria can start an inflammation response in the pulp. This can cause the dilation of the vessels inside the pulp and increase the mediator inflammations and the exudate. This can cause pressure on the nerves and cause pain. In the imaging features of the inflammatory lesions may verify depending on the stage of the disease. Early lesions may show very little changes on the image, so the diagnosis may rely on the clinical signs and symptoms. The epicenter of the periapical inflammatory lesion is located near the apex of the involved tooth. The earliest radiographic change of the bone is isolated in the apex of the root. It can cause focal apical widening pedial, that is called the pedial widening, and the loss of periapical lambda dura. As the inflammation goes on, the lesion enlarges beyond the periodontal space in the apex and starts to resorb the bone that is centered to the apex. This is called the rarefying ostitis. It is stand for inflammation, rarefaction causing by inflammation in the jaw. Bone deposition can occur around the rarefaction altering the normal morphology of the tropical bone pattern that is called the sclerosing ostitis, bone formation in the jaw caused by inflammation. Depending on the virulence of the microorganism and the host immune response, sclerosing or rarefying ostitis can be overcome, but sometimes we can see them together. The inflammation can spread through the bone beyond the apex of the tooth and reaches to the surface and the overlying peristome. What is the peristome? The peristome is a layer on the surface of the bone that contains cells that can produce bone. The inflammatory mediators can elevate the peristome and stimulate it. Therefore, a newly bone is created on the cortex of the bone surface. This is called the peristome reaction. Whenever another period of inflammation occurs, the peristome can be elevated again Layers of a periosteal reaction caused by inflammation creates an onion skin appearance. So let's see some radiographics. We see a tooth decay. In the apex of the tooth, the yellow arrow is showing a rarefaction in the apex. It's called the rarefying ostitis. The white arrow is showing the pedial widening in the apex of the tooth caused by the inflammation. In this decayed tooth, the green arrow is showing a rare fraction in the apex of the tooth caused by inflammation. So this is called the rarefying ostitis. 
around the rarefaction, we have bone formation that is called sclerosing. So the blue arrow is showing the sclerosing ostitis. In this radiographic, we see a semi-erupted third molar in the mandible that there is a pericoronitis around the tooth. The pericoronitis causes inflammation and this, this inflammation can pass through the bone and reaches the inferior border of the mandible. The inferior border of the mandible that has peristone that can be elevated and peristone reaction can be produced by the inflammation in the inferior border of the mandible. In this radiographic image, we see peristal reaction that has an onion skin appearance in the inferior border of the mandible. In the right side of the mandible, you see there is a toothless part that the tooth are extracted because the sliver carries and has caused inflammation in the jaw. Inflammation has reached the inferior border of the mandible and has caused peristal reaction. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for your attention.